Now, I really, really want to hear about this. Is it Late Night with the Devil? It is Late Night with the Devil, yeah. This has been... I watched the trailer for this when I went to see Monster. You haven't seen Monster yet, have you? I haven't, no. Cool. So I, well, I went to go and see the, 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 the trailer for this. Well, I went, I, when I went to go and see Monster, saw the trailer for this. And immediately, do you know what? Just gave me such a buzz. The aesthetic of it yeah. is so cool. And I wanted to know straight away, does it hold up? Do, do you are you drawn in by it it does it's, it's very well done um i don't know if they've used cameras or such of the time or if just their grading has been superb right. but it, they've completely captured that 70s vibe that you know the sort of the sort of movies and tv shows hold, hold, hold over style yeah that we'd get from the states when we were sort of growing up still a little bit i mean i'm a little bit older than you so i probably saw even more of a tail end of it where it was still old television then but say by the belly type even era. older than that mate, like the sort of saturday afternoons and sunday afternoons and things when they'd stick on little house in the prairie and all that type of stuff right um <laughs> And it's, so it's, it's definitely got that 70s. They've captured the sort of the, what I would say is like the brownness of the 70s. The 70s yeah. are very sort of brown, brown suits yeah. and, you know, color grading. Sofas, and, brown sofas and chairs. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of the vibe. That was the aesthetic. So they capture that quite well. Um, look, I mean, before we, because there is some controversy surrounding this film, um, and it's not really to do with the content of the film as such. Um, let's do that at the end. We'll, we'll talk about the film itself, first of all. Essentially, this is a sort of twist on found footage, the found footage genre, um, in so much as it's supposed to be some tapes found in an archive of a 1970s talk show th- where things went awry. Um, it was a Halloween special, um, Hosted by, it was hosted by Jack Delroy. Jack Delroy, who was kind of one of the top dogs um, in the talk show game in the 1970s in this world, in this fictional world. And uh, he, he has this show called Night Owls. And he's gone through some sort of various different bits of personal trauma and so on and so forth. Um, and ratings are now on the wane. So to bring those ratings back up, um, to, to make him top dog once again, He's uh, had this idea to have a, a Halloween episode on which he will bring out somebody who claims to be possessed by the devil. Um, and there's a bit, there's a gentle build up to this um, in the film. Like, you know, you see him, one of the first guests on board is uh, a psychic medium um so the medium's doing a bit of there is there anybody here who knows a, a john sorry i don't mean john i mean james uh george yeah george yeah there you go you know and they go go through all that sort of thing and then they have the skeptic come on who debunks what the medium was just doing and debunks the occult stuff in general and then the final one is we have this young girl who has been raised in this kind of satanic cult and managed to escape from it after tragedy befalls the cult and they all end up sort of performing a mass suicide. And uh, she's there with her psychologist dash adopted mother now um, to essentially talk about everything that she's gone through and also the fact that she is still possessed by the devil. Now the film is a real, it's a real slow burner. Um, I think we've all sort of, you know, we've all seen the possessed type thing before now, right? We know it, the kind of, it's usually the archetypal kind of young girl who's all like, Oh, hello. Hello everybody. And then suddenly they're faced and they're all like, fuck it, fuck your mother and all that. <laughs> It's very much, you know what I mean? (laughs) It it must be a real treat getting talked dirty to by you, Jack. (laughs) (laughs) It's not that bit from the in-betweeners. I want to fuck your fucking fanny off. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Let me compose myself. Sorry. Sorry. Bring it back. Bring it back. It's all right. <laughs> and uh, so you kind of, you know, it follows that chain of things. Um, it builds up quite nicely. You start to learn more and more about the different characters through different little bread crummy bits and all that type of stuff. And it's done all quite well. It's all done through this found footage um, style of doing stuff. One criticism that I've heard of the film um, before we go into the bigger sort of controversy surrounding the film is that, so when, when you will see on this movie, when it goes to ad breaks, right, you will see certain people, certain, you know, hosts or people working behind the scenes, having conversations backstage that you would say, nobody would have filmed that. So if you're doing this as a found footage thing, why is the a camera while they're having a private conversation in a dressing room? And it doesn't even seem like somebody's sneaking out from behind a doorway. Camera's just there filming two people being like, ratings are going to shit. We've got to do something, blah, you know? And it's kind of like that pulled you out of the gimmick a little bit, but you can forgive it because the way in which they've realized the um the way in which they've realized the the main part of the show is really really good i would say the performance from uh, apologies my pronunciation is not perfect but david dustmalchian who you will know as that guy in that film he's that but he's finally getting like a leading guy role and he's brilliant he's really well, really good uh, is that uh, guy in that film Prisoners? Yeah, he is. There you go. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. And uh, he – check out the Empire podcast as well. They interviewed him um, last week. He comes across such a sound guy as well. He he? Seems, yeah, it seems like he's had a really tough road to get to this now, being like a, a leading guy on a movie. And he's brilliant. He grabs it with both hands, and he's really, really good. So I hope he gets – more opportunities off the back of this because the film is, you know, it, it's getting a lot of praise and a lot of people are really enjoying it. Um, two directors, Cameron Cairns and Colin Cairns, they apparently flew all of the the kind of cast out to Australia there and filmed it out there in Melbourne. I wow. want to say that's really um, cool. So it is. It's quite. It's quite a small film. It's quite. It's an indie production, um, and it's it's doing really really well. My sort of criticism of the film, I would say, is that the film is, I, I just think the final act, it lost me a little bit, a little bit, the final act lost me. And I don't want to go into it too much more than that because I don't want to, to, to give any spoilers. Um, can I it, can I ask really quickly on, hmm. you know, you said about the, the found footage kind of genre. What would you say is kind of another another film you might align it with just in terms of the, the sort of thematic of it. Are we um, going kind of like Blair Witch style or are we going more kind of down that poltergeisty sort of exorcist route? It's definitely more poltergeisty exorcist kind of right, thing. Okay. But it's, it's, you know, it's, it's just imagine like this, this show was taped in the 1970s and because of right. what happened on here, it got it never saw the archive. Though, yeah, kind of right. thing. Right. Okay. Um, so so the final act kind of lost you, though. Final act kind of lost me a bit, but the film is is still good, and it's an independent movie, and I think there's a lot in there to enjoy. Um, especially, like I say, the the performance of David Dasmalshin, who I think was was really particularly very good. Um, a shout out as well to Risa Tori, um, who was this kind of comedy foil throughout who I think played that really, really well as well. Um, now the controversy that I keep speaking about with this film is that there are three, there's three instances in this movie where f if I understand it correctly, what they are, it's what you'll see is when the movie goes to an ad break um, within the context of the show that's that you're watching there's some stills that have been used that were in part ai generated so the 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 artistry team the graphics team whoever who have worked on this movie have employed some um form of ai whatever gimmickry to 
creating these images. Now, the argument has come in that obviously we cannot start to welcome AI into mainstream or into any of the creative arts. As a creative endeavor, they should have had more solidarity with a potential artist who would be put out of work. I don't, I'm not, don't know why I'm saying artists like that. An artist who would be put out of work. An, an unnamed artist. Hat that, yeah. yeah. That, that, that could have created these interstitial images um, and done that. And I think these are all kind of points that I agree with. And I don't, you know, I, I think in principle, I kind of understand there, there has been some calls to boycott this movie. And that's, where I'm kind of, I think the anger is slightly misplaced on that front. Um, I don't really agree with that so much in the respect that this is an independent movie. This is, you know, a lot of people who have probably worked on this is one of their first footholds, major footholds anyway, into the industry. It's getting a lot of excitement. So I think for... For the sake of one, like we say, straw man artist, you're throwing a load of other artists under the bus. And I think the moralizing behind that falls down when you look at it from that, um, when you look at it through that lens. Another kind of point that is, that has been raised that I can't get any solid clarification on because I've seen mixed reviews. I've seen some people say that they actually did employ an artist to work on a lot of stuff for the film. And it is that artist who used AI to aid them with their creation of this anyway. So it's not like it's just somebody who works in finance at the studio store, well, we need to save a penny, so I'm going to generate these images. It is somebody who has already been implied to create the look and feel, create the artistry behind the movie, who is using the AI tools as a way in which to supplement their work. Another point that has been raised as well is I believe the film has been in production since 2021, and the AI conversation at that point wasn't quite in the place that it's at now. Yeah. Um, and I do think these are important distinctions to make. The other point, another big point that has been raised is that apparently Marvel movies, several of the most recent Marvel movies have all employed, um, AI generated images at various different points. So you should be pointing your eye on more at the big studios who are starting to do that now, as opposed to an indie production, which is actually getting some time in the limelight. It feels just a bit mean spirited to bring that down um, with a level of controversy that you're not bringing to the big major studios who are still so hesitant to put any kind of blocks in place over the use of AI and the implementation of it within like the creative industries. So, do you reckon? Do you reckon potentially there are films out there that we will find out in years from now that have been sort of gone way further than we realized with air with ai well because this is this is a, a, a perfect point to make because where do we draw the line on this because do we do, how many of these movies do we know how many script writers do we know who haven't ran maybe one of their scenes through a chat gpt bot just to be like does this scene work do you know what what yeah. how, how can I tighten this scene up or whatever? There's already been several authors come out and say that they've used different kind of um, chat AI applications in order to read over their books and ask them if the, you know, if it's staying on theme or whatever, or if it's, so I mean, where, where do we draw the line on this? Because you, you even have tools like Photoshop. Now Photoshop has plenty of AI kind of tools built into it. Most editing programs now have AI tools built in, clean up the sound, scrub the audio, do this, do that. There's probably at some point or another, somebody who could have been employed to do that. I mean, it's, it's very hard, isn't it? It's very hard to draw the line on this. And I think, look, everyone's allowed their own perspective on this. And like I said, I don't entirely disagree with the issues that people raise with this in principle in, um, in uh, late night with the devil. I just, I'm not on board really with the idea of boycotting it for the reasons I've stated already. And, and also there's, there's a, there's really interesting kind of dichotomy here in that you are on, on one side of it. You kind of can completely get the idea that it's a slippery slope and you think, oh, you don't want to see that creep in, particularly if a precedent is set on independent productions that you want to support. And then that becomes the, 
the precedent that the big studios used to be like, well, listen, no one had a problem when it was any of the smaller companies that are, are doing it. So why are we going to be sort of held to a higher standard? Yeah. Equally, at the same time, I mean, just rubbish anecdote, but um, I was having a conversation with someone the other day about what to write in a, in a, uh, an anniversary card uh, for someone's wedding anniversary. And we were sitting there and I was like, well, you can't, you like, you just have to be from you, it has to be from the heart. And they're like, ah, oh, I just put it through chat GPT. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. You can't like, you can't, you can't just grab it from there. But I thought that was a really interesting kind of, even as a silly sort of flippant example, it's a really interesting idea around where we kind of are now because the person who receives that would never know, you know, and so they're never going to be affected by it. But if we start normalizing the idea of just this implementation in the most minute of things and the small things, it does then create building blocks for us to go, oh, well, sod it. Maybe we could just do, maybe the editing, we could get first pass of the edit to be done by AI, you know, just mm. get the first part. And then we'll go through it with a fine tooth comb, but the first pass will get done. And then it becomes the second pass is done by AI. And then it's just like, well, we'll just tighten up at the end. And that is where you get into a really, really ugly place. But I, I completely agree with you. Is it, I don't think we're in a place where you want to see people boycotting a film like that. That clearly has gone to great lengths to try and feel very authentic and to actually do something a little bit different. 